think I'm back. Yeah, I should be back. Um, all right, I'm not going to do the rendering like that. Uh, I'm just going to show you. I'm going to set up the rest of the materials just to show you how to do that. Um, then I'll just show you how it looks in like a preview window. But now you have the lighting set up, so you know how to do this. Uh, that should cover everything. Um, don't need these blends anymore. Um, so I'm just going to, let's see, get my clothing first. So, um, and I can always do a lighting preview here too. Let's turn, actually, let's real quick, let's turn off the, uh, the fill stuff is going to take, uh, or the, um, the direction, the area lights are actually going to take up more render time than directional because there's just their cat, uh, with the fall off and stuff, it takes a little bit longer to render those things. So let's just work with directional for now. I'm going to hit seven, which gives me a lighting preview. It apparently turns that stuff black. Let's see if I go to viewport 2.0, maybe. Okay, so it slows things down, but this is kind of Maya's version of Marmoset. It's the real-time look at things. Uh, I'm going to turn 6 on again just to make it textured and not lit. And Actually, I'm just going to go back to Legacy for now. So the, uh, the other one looks it's just a little too intense. One thing that I've noticed when I set up these renders, she really does need eyelashes, so I'm going to add that to her. I'm not sure how I want to do that yet. Um, but yeah, there's just not enough. There, we need some darkness around here. I could do some of that with texture, but I really wanted some geometry. I think eyelashes will really help her out quite a bit. Um, so, all right. Let's finish setting these textures up. All right, so clothing. Let's do that first. Uh, so we have uh, color already. Uh, we're going to ignore diffuse. I know we've been calling it diffuse, but we're just ignoring that for now because blends just kind of operate differently from everything else. Um, so specular color, we have a spec map now. So let's plug that in. And that is going to be clothing S. Uh, it might be a little too, it might be weird, but yeah. No, I think that's good. I think it's a good setting. Uh, and then finally, uh, we want to select it again and we're gonna do our bump map. Uh, so this is gonna be a tangent space normal. Um, we're not doing a bump, bump is black and white image. Uh, which we could actually probably use our spec map as a pump map, but we created a nice normal map, so let's use the tangent space normals for that. And tangent space basically just means that it is uh, in regards to the whole world. If I did object space, you would notice a big difference. It's like kind of a color gradient from top right to bottom left, and it looks very different. Uh, so needless to say, the type of normal map that we're generating is tangent space. And then I just want to plug in the actual file here, clothing, and this now gives us a little bit more of a preview of what these folds and all look like. Getting some serious meringue off of Maya for some reason, even though it's very subtle. But all right, and let's do the same thing now for the rest of the bodies. Now for this, because I have three materials that are all using the same textures, I'm going to graph them down here. And this way, I can just create my one texture and plug it into all of them. So let's take the, uh, working with the skin, uh, we have the color already plugged into all of them, which we see here. And now we just want the bump map, which is going to be our normal map. Set this again to tangent space normals. And let's find our head. So you can see that gives us a little bit more of a nice look here, but it's only connected to our skin right now, not our hair. So you can see looking at this, that it is the al alpha, hmm. That is driving the, yeah, alpha goes to bump value, which goes to, um, so let's just grid graph this again. I would have thought that, it, okay, I guess it's the alpha of each RGB. Huh. Anyway, let's go into the normal camera. So a couple ways we can do this. I could select these and I could just middle mouse drag this to bump. And that'll connect it and that's probably the easiest way to do it. So let's just do it that way. And then I'm just middle mouse dragging this bump node again into here. So now you can see we've got that look going on the scarf and on the hair, which we did not have before. And save. And finally, we just have our specular map to bring in here. Uh, so go to specular color, file, and we want our head spec. Um, did I make? I don't think I've made my official one yet out of this, so this might not be exactly what I want. Yeah, this just kind of gives me a skin value. Um, let's remap all these one more time. 
We have our head spec, and that's going into specular color. So let's just select these and middle mouse drag into specular color. And do the same thing here. Yeah, so that just gave my hair a little bit more of a sheen. Um, I might still turn eccentricity. Well, yeah, I, I don't want it to be that influential. But uh, So there we have it. Um, so if I were to render this again, I think it would look pretty good. Maybe I'll try it with a directional light, but my guess is it's going... Well, let's try it. If I get disconnected, so be it. It's going to just break up the videos, but that's all right. Um, actually, before I render, I'm just going to show one more thing. So we have our occlusion layer. And I did this before, but I'm going to do this one more time. Uh, what you want to do is, with nothing selected in the scene, you want to right-click on the layer and go to Attributes. And that brings up the ability to click the Preset button, which gives us occlusion. So what this does is it creates a new... It does two things. It creates something called a material override, which means that anything that I drop into that render layer, into the occlusion render layer here, uh, will it overrides whatever material was on it and will apply the occlusion. Um, so, and it also creates an occlusion um, material, uh, which I actually already had one, but we'll just use this one anyway new so I can show you some of the values um, so by default you can do the IPR real quick you'll see basically what it does is creates cavities it takes the cavities it bounces rays around and detects within a certain point if things are close enough then it creates uh, a shadow basically uh, and looking into like the corner top corner of a room is kind of the best way to sort of see how this works um, but it's just like a nice soft like even lighting kind of uh, type thing that you can do to things uh, and it makes a nice multiply in your beauty render. Um, so I'm going to do two things. I'm going to up my uh, occlusion settings to like 32. Uh, the samples need to be a little bit higher. And then I'm going to set, I'm going to try out doing the default is usually pretty good, um, but it's not always perfect. And you'll also notice that we're not getting the normal map. I can't really in this amount of time get into how we could add that, but we're just not going to do it for now. Um, this will still give us the crevices that we really want. Um, so basically you're doing the spread and the distance. The so spread is like how far out, and I might get this a little bit wrong. Um, so it's worth looking up, but you basically just want to mess with these, and they usually want to be similar values. Um, so actually, let's switch that around. Max distance is how far to search for another object to basically create a darkening ray or color. Um, so with max distance of zero, it basically sets it to the world scale of like infinite. So it's just searching through everything. And spread, I kind of forget exactly how that works. But let's set the max distance up. I think spread basically just diffuses the, uh, it kind of softens the fall off. So like if I spread, spread this up to like uh, two, I think it'll just, yeah. I don't know how the calculation works, but it essentially just literally spreads the uh, effect out a little bit. Um, let's set both of these to two. Two, I think, is too soft on my spread, so I'm going to keep it at, like, 1.2. Let's see what that gives me. Um, that's not too bad. Um, let's try just 0.8 and 0.8, actually. Mm, I want to spread a little bit more than that. 1.2. <clears throat> so that's pretty nice. Um, the defaults might be better. I don't know. The nice thing with the default is you get a value for everything. So let's let's go back to that. Let's go to zero. Um, and maybe just 0.6 to kind of lighten. No, oh, 0.6 is too low. Is there anything on the top of this? Let's try different things out. <clears throat> to get a value that you like. I kind of wanted to get a little bit of darkening across the whole model. Um, I lose some contrast here, but I think that's okay. Let's go up a little higher. Yeah, I don't think I like that. Um, keep it at 20 and I think 1. Alright. So, 13 minutes to 3. Um, haven't gotten to Marmoset yet, but let's do, I'm going to do uh, my lighting passes and get them into Photoshop. So I'm just hitting render, 
Uh, first of all, I'm going to change this setting to, um, I actually still don't want the full res. That's pretty big. I'm going to stick with 1080 by 1440. And it's hitting render. Hopefully I stay. I'm using directional lights and stuff, so hopefully it doesn't kick me out. So far, so good. Okay. Cool. So let's save this. Uh, my images, uh, I'm going to do a new render test. Render, let's go, let's call this one beauty front 01. Uh, occlusion one and now let's go to our beauty layer and let's just render this and see what we get all right still no disconnection that's good that's good 